I saw Green Day live for the first time. A couple of weeks ago, I was able to see them on the Saviors Tour in Phoenix, Arizona, and oh boy, it was amazing. And before you ask, yes, this is a filler video, but don't click off just yet because I do talk about some pretty interesting things here and there. Regardless, join me as I walk you through my experience seeing Green Day in concert for the first time. So for a bit of context, this is something that I had wanted to do for a while. But whenever Green Day decided to tour, my hometown was never a stop they made. And the Saviors tour was no exception. But after a bit of deliberation, what had originally been planned as just a post-graduation trip to somewhere in the United States morphed into seeing Green Day live. If they weren't coming to my city, then I'd be going to them. With the chosen city being Phoenix, Arizona, and the band performing at Chase Field. Why Phoenix and not somewhere a little closer to home? Uh, I don't f***ing know. That and I come from Canada, and the heat is definitely an improvement to misery. So, once the tickets were bought, I waited. And waited. And waited. Until mid-September finally rolled around. My excitement growing larger and larger the closer the date of departure got. And on the morning of September 14th, 2024, I took off for the desert of Arizona. Fortunately for me, the concert was on the 18th, so I had a few days to run around, sightsee, and go places that don't exist in Canada. God, I miss Target. Also, Jack in the Box and Duncan are mid. I don't care about your feelings. It was all really cool, and I'd love to go back someday. While experiencing Phoenix, I picked up the Mark, Tom, and Travis show on CD, as well as these four records. Yeah, save the hype sticker. What are you judging me for? Also, the day before the concert, I saw the Grand Canyon. Pictures cannot do the thing justice. It's really something you have to see in person just to understand the sheer scope of it all. It really took my breath away just seeing how massive it is. Anyway, the day of the concert had arrived, and to be honest, I was a little nervous. Mainly because this is my first concert experience. Unless you want to count me seeing the Wiggles when I was like three. Tune in next week where I will listen to every Wiggles album so you don't have to. Regardless, I made my way to Chase Field pretty early and managed to grab some merch after waiting in the world's longest line that actually managed to move pretty quickly. In fact, that was so early that the openers hadn't even started yet. Before I go any further, it should be noted that while I did take quite a bit of footage, I wasn't keen on recording the whole show or anything. I did want some footage because I did know I would be making this video, uh, but at the same time, part of going to a show is to experience it in the moment without looking through your phone the entire time. In fact, if I were to do the whole thing again, I probably wouldn't film anything, or at least only parts of it that I deemed important, like the final song for instance. Uh, but that would be the only thing I'd change. However, I do feel like I did strike quite a good balance between taking footage for this video and just living in the moment and experiencing the concert. With my earplugs firmly wedged in my ear canal, I made my way to my admittedly pretty decent seat and got to see the first opener, the Linda Lindas. Never heard of them before. And you know, I was pleasantly surprised at how good they really were. I swear this isn't a diss, but the band really felt like a bunch of punk high school friends just making music because that's what they love doing. It was really awesome of Green Day to have these girls open for them, because that way it can help get their name out there and in turn cause more people to listen to them, which I definitely will in the future, because what I heard was pretty damn good. After them was Rancid, a name I had heard, but I couldn't name you a single song of theirs if I tried. <laughs> Again, another band I enjoyed despite having no invested interest in them prior to the show. Much like the Linda Lindas, I'll definitely want to dive into their discography at some point. However, I'd probably do the Linda Lindas first, since Rancid have been around for over 30 years, so I don't exactly know where I'd start. Once a brief intermission was over, the lights dimmed, and it was time for Smashing Pumpkins, a band I had only just gotten into a week before I had to leave to Phoenix, as in I knew the hits and liked them. They were... weird? Not bad, they were not bad, but I feel like I was missing something. Hearing 1979 live was cool, as well as some of the other hits, but unlike Rancid or the Linda Lindas where I hadn't heard any of their songs before going in and still liked their stuff regardless, I feel like with Smashing Pumpkins that I would have liked their set more had I been into them for a longer period of time. Also, Billy Corgan didn't really have the stage presence I thought he would have, even if his attire is somewhere between Roman Catholic Priest and Sith Lord. The lighting during the performance was also pretty cool, not gonna lie, and despite not knowing a lot of the songs, I was still having a good time. The pumpkins exited the stage, the lights turned on, temporarily flashbanging me, and about 10 minutes later, within those 10 minutes last night by the strokes was played over the speakers, the lights dimmed again. And soon, Bohemian Rhapsody started playing, with everyone rising from their seats. Even if it was just the song playing over the speakers, it was still epic to see everyone go nuts and sing the song. Same with Blitzkrieg Bop that played afterwards. With that being said, Green Day made their way to the stage and started their set with The American Dream Is Killing Me. 
and the crowd, including myself, went nuts. I don't know what it is, but Billy Joe Armstrong just has such a captivating stage presence. He knows how to command a crowd, so it transforms the show from feeling like you're just watching some guys play songs that you've heard a million times to an experience that you just cannot get by listening to the albums. A few times throughout the show, he asked people to put their phones away, and people, including me, complied. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention the outstanding performances by not just Armstrong, but by Mike Durnt and Trey Cool, as well as the touring band Jason White, Jason Fries, and Kevin Preston, as well as everyone else involved in putting the show together. They all did a phenomenal job in making that night one I'll remember forever. Moving back to the music, once American Dream is Killing Me wrapped up, the band snapped right into performing the entirety of Dookie for the album's 30th anniversary. Which not only meant that I'd be hearing classics like Basket Case, When I Come Around, and Welcome to Paradise, but deep cuts would also be guaranteed, like my favorite song from the album, Eminus Sleepus. The balloon plane was also really cool, especially when the bottom opened over the pit and dropped balloon bombs. Hearing these songs live gave them an extra dimension that just can't be captured in the studio recording. The breakdown of Welcome to Paradise, the springy bass line of She, the punch of Longview, lyrics of Coming Clean, and plenty of more were all heard in a new light that makes me appreciate Dookie, an album I already loved, that much more. And I don't care who you are, hearing F*** Off and Die Live is the best way to experience that song. Also, Trey's antics during All By Myself were a treat. Once Dookie finished, they moved into playing some bigger hits, as well as newer stuff. During Know Your Enemy, I not only freaked out because they played a song from my second favorite album of theirs, but Green Day also invited a fan on stage to sing the bridge verse. I knew that they do this all the time, but something about seeing them do it in person just hits so much different. That probably made her day, and she actually knew the words, which is a plus. Look Ma No Brains was great as always, and the crowd chanting the hook of One-Eyed Bastard was a delight. I also find it really ironic that when they were playing Dilemma, that's when they had people who worked for the stadium go around and peddle beer. During a song about the dangers of alcoholism, you have no shame. Minority was a pleasure live, and so was Brain Stew, especially since my relationship with Insomniac has kind of changed after my video about it blew up. But, instead of having it go into Jaded like it does on the album, that's when they started American Idiot. The song, and in turn the album, as they were also playing it front to back for its 20th anniversary. In all honesty, American Idiot is probably my favorite album of all time. It does have some competition in my mind, but I don't think any other record comes close to having the same cohesion and overall firepower that it does. I eventually plan on doing a big deep dive into American Idiot, hopefully in the not too distant future, so I'll save why it means so much for me for then. But that's all preamble for me to say that hearing the album front to back live made me fall in love with it all over again. All nine minutes of both Jesus of Suburbia and Homecoming were outstanding and really helped the feeling that these songs are indeed telling a story. In the title track, he changed the lyric to, I'm not part of a MAGA agenda like in the New Year's Rock and Eve performance. All I'll say is keep it civil in the comments, guys. Holiday was kick-ass and everybody putting their phone flashlights in the air during Boulevard of Broken Dreams straight up looked like stars in the sky. There's so much more I could talk about. The chant of Are We The Waiting, the confetti streamers during St. Jimmy, Billy's awesome speech during Letterbomb, which is exactly the reason why I love music so much, the fact that he said, it's that time of year again, and I almost cried during Wake Me Up When September Ends, and all of What's Her Name, hearing American Idiot Live was everything I could have asked for and more. The encore was only two songs, the first being Bobby Socks from Saviors, which was a song that I wasn't a huge fan of at first, but upon hearing it live, I appreciated it a lot more. It still isn't one of my favorites, but I at least get it a little better. It's a song to get people's hands waving in the air during shows. It's still alright. The final song of the night was, of course, Good Riddance, a fitting closer to a phenomenal show. Even if I knew they closed every single concert with it, but I don't care. And with that, Green Day walked off stage, fireworks went off, the stadium emptied, and I was left speechless for the rest of the night. Not just because I had no voice from screaming Green Day songs for the past two and a half hours, but because I had no words to describe what I had just saw, what I had just experienced. Regardless, after making it back to the car, I tried to compose my thoughts and recorded this video of myself right after walking out of Chase Field. So, um, hello everybody. Uh, I, I just got done seeing uh, Green Day live for the first time. Uh, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona right now. Um, That was probably one of the best experiences I'll ever have. Wow. They're, they're, they're really... Because this was my technically my first concert, but this... I, I, I really... I didn't really do much research about this. I, I knew they were playing American Idiot in full and Dookie in full and, and that sort of They'll also be playing some other songs. But... 
Fuck me, dude. That was like, that was better than I even could have expected. The, I don't really, like, this is like, I we, we the, the concert just ended like 10 minutes ago. I, I really, I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Um, other than holy sh**. Uh, and I, yeah, uh, this. <sighs> There's really, I, I don't, I don't know what to f say because my thoughts right now are just so, so raw. That was unreal. Like Billy Joe Armstrong's f stage presence was, was was unlike anything else. Like he f could command a crowd. Um, like you could like you could feel the f bass from like Mike and Trey Cool's Dre bass drum. Like you you can you could feel that in your chest. Like it was f unreal. We were having a hell of a time. I here I have no voice because I was singing along to every f song basically, and uh, you know going like hey oh. I mean, there's no other context where you can do that and, and you know, not look like a f***ing idiot. Um, but yeah, that was, that was, I, that was next level, honestly. That was something, that was something I really just didn't, like, I, I could, I prepared for it in my mind. I was nervous going in, I don't f***ing know why. Um, it, it, it was just, like, you know, it, it was, it was great. I would totally, I would do this again in a Heartbeat. The next morning, my voice still parched from the night before, I had to hit the road to Sin City. Not to gamble or drink, but for an upcoming video. I'll let you guess what it's going to be about. So now that I'm a little further removed from that night of craziness, what did I think of it? It was amazing. You probably could have guessed that based on the title of the video. Everyone in the band was giving their A game, not to mention the absolutely stacked set list. This concert is going to be something I'm going to remember for years to come. But like I said earlier, if I did the whole thing again, I'd probably have filmed next to none of it. Not to be confused with none of it. And while part of me is a tad disappointed that they didn't play songs like 21 Guns, Hitchin' a Ride, and my favorite song for them, Jar, I'm honestly not too let down by it. Rather, I'm just glad I got to see them at all. Especially seeing as they had two full albums of material they had to get through, which is probably something that they're never going to do again, which it's really cool that I got to be a part of this pretty important moment of their history. I don't really want to come off like I'm bragging with this video, even though you could definitely interpret it that way. Uh, that's not really the point of it. Uh, rather, I just wanted to share a really cool experience that I had with all of you guys, because I know all of you, most of you, care about the music just as much as I do, which is awesome. Hopefully this will open the door for me to see other bands that I love play live someday, but for now, I've got to get back to chronicling the history of said bands, so until next time, see you around.